namely that antidepressants often do not do what they promise and are in fact causing harm to many. Uh, Dr. Sick Steve Hoxie is suing tired. over Obamacare's employer mandate. It's time for a wellness time revolution. A wellness revolution. Brought to you by Hoxie Health and Wellness Center. Honest discussion on maintaining health and wellness naturally to enjoy a better quality of life. He's the doctor fighting to let you keep your doctor. In. Now, Dr. Stephen Hoxie. Welcome to Dr. Hosey's Wellness Revolution. This is Stacey Banfield here with the founder of the Hosey Health and Wellness Center, Dr. Stephen Hosey. And just a reminder that we do have podcasts available for you to download. It's so easy to be a subscriber. All you have to do is go to HoseyPodcast.com. That's H-O-T-Z-E Podcast.com. You can listen to all of our podcasts day or night. Now, we've got such a great topic. You know, I feel a sneeze coming on. I feel a sneeze coming on. No, wait. Not going to happen. But you know, if you feel sick around the same times of year, spring, fall, are you really sick or is it something else? Perhaps it's, it's allergy. So Dr. Hosey, why don't you share with us a little bit more about how we can determine, is it sickness, is it an allergy, and what can we do about it? Well, I want to remind each one of you that I believe that no matter what your symptoms are, if you're driving down the wrong way of the health freeway, you could end up getting in a wreck. You got to turn around. You got to do a 180 and take charge of your health. That's why I host this program, encouraging you to do a 180 now. Don't wait till next year. Don't wait till you get a wreck. You have diabetes or heart disease or terrible high blood pressure or kidney disorders or degenerative arthritis or strokes or Alzheimer's. Get your, prevent those health problems now by doing a 180 and taking charge of your health. And I want to remind you that I believe you need a health coach. You need a doctor and a staff of professionals who will coach you onto a path of health and wellness naturally. So you enjoy a better quality of life as you age without the use of pharmaceutical drugs. Now today, we're going to discuss the topic of allergies. Allergies afflict about 40% of the population in America. If we have 300 million, we maybe have 350 million, but let's say 300 million, that represents about... 120 million individuals with allergies, half of whom are sick enough to be treated. That's 60 million individuals. Now, what is an allergy? Well, an allergy is an abnormal reaction by your body's immune system to normal occurring substances in the environment, things you breathe in the air, the weed pollens, the tree pollens, the grass pollens, the dust mites, the mold spores, the animal danders. We have weed pollens from middle of July all the way to the first freeze. Then during the winter, you turn on the heater, especially down south and even up north, you turn on the heater, you got a lot of mold, oh, mold. Yes. that's up in the vents. And so you get allergies from that. Then the spring comes around and you get the spring and the trees pollinate. You know, get that green film on your car. That's tree pollen and that's in spring. And then late spring and early summer, you've got the grass pollens. And then year around, you got mold spores. If you live along the uh, Gulf Coast or live along any of the uh, oceans, you're going to have a wet, humid climate, and you're going to experience year-round mold problems. So, and then in your bedding, you got dust mites, and you got animals in your house like dogs or cats. You got animal danders. So these are the airborne allergens that you inhale and which can cause your body to react. And I'll explain what those, that, how that reaction occurs in just a minute. Another type of allergy beside airborne allergies is food allergy. I didn't learn a thing about food allergy, much less airborne allergies in medical school. Now, if allergies afflict about 120 million people and about 60 million people, have it bad enough that they need treatment, and I mean allergy immunization treatment. If the doctors didn't learn about treatment of airborne allergies and food allergies, and the common food allergies are the big six, wheat, corn, egg, milk, yeast, and soybean. Coconut oil, there's a lot of coconut too. Some people have coconut reactions. Any food can cause a problem. But those, pro those particularly the big six, wheat, corn, egg, milk, yeast, and soybean, are found in all the processed foods. And if you have a diathesis, a, a predisposition towards allergies, 
your body will start reacting to foods as well. So you have combined food allergies, which can cause a host of health problems. Now, let me explain. Here's what happens. When you inhale or ingest a specific food, when you inhale those allergens, your body, if you have a predisposition towards allergy, you will begin to make antibodies to these normal occurring substances as if they were bacteria or viruses. And the antibodies are IgE, immunoglobulin E, as in Edgar. And they float in the blood, and they're made by the plasma cells, and they float in the blood, and they bind to mast cells, which line your mucous membranes in the sinuses, your nose, down into your lungs, line the mucosal lining in the, in the esophagus, in the gut. You have mast cells, and these IgE antibodies are attached to the mast cells. Next time you're exposed to that allergen, you not only make more antibodies, IgE antibodies, but the, but the allergens bind to the, they literally bind to the IgE antibodies on the mast cells. That causes the mast spell, cells to rupture and spill their contents. Well, guess what the content is in... Mast cells. Histamine. Histamine. That should sound familiar to a lot of people. So that's why people take antihistamines. That's right. Like Claritin and Zyrtex and Benadryl, a host of uh, antihistamines, to block the histamine and to bind it to help relieve the symptoms. But if all you do, and, and listen, so what are the symptoms that cause? It can cause itchy eyes. Itchy nose, runny nose, sneezing, rhinitis, sinus inflammation and pressure. Uh, it causes the postnasal drainage. You know, we got all the, and then it gets down in the lungs. So and it it's causes, miserable. It causes fluid in the lungs, and then it causes the uh, bronchial tubes to narrow, and you begin to wheeze, and you get asthma. You may get recurrent sinus infections, recurrent ear infections, recurrent bronchial infections. It can affect the gastrointestinal system where you get. You may get bloating or belching or gas or irritable bowel syndromes like diarrhea or even reflux can be caused by this. It can cause skin disorders like eczema where you get a rash all over your skin. We see this commonly in young kids that have food allergies. Remember, if you have a child that has a recurrent ear infection, the most common cause is a milk allergy about 50 to 60% of the time. If you simply eliminate dairy from the diet of your child, they're uh, ear infections will clear up and you won't have them. You won't have to go have them pierced and drained and all that and put on antibiotics over and over again, which is not healthy. So think about this drainage that you get in your sinus when the, when the mast cells rupture and they spill histamine. It causes the, it causes the uh, microvasculature, the capillaries to swell, and they begin to spill their serum. So you get this drainage, and it coats the inner lining of the sinuses and the all the way down into the bronchial tubes. And guess what? It's a culture media for bacteria. Just like you used to play it out if you ever did any biology in high school or college and you played out the bacteria. It's a culture media. Well, this is a culture media for the bacteria in your sinus, the bronchial tubes, and the eustachian tubes in the ears. And it causes infections. So what do you do? Well, when you get an infection, you go to the doctor and you get an antibiotic. Maybe you get a shot at dexamethasone or some cortisone shot. And then they put you on antibiotics. And you may get that just once a year. But what happens every time you're exposed to these airborne allergens and or food allergens combined, you begin to get more and more allergic reactions. So now maybe you have a sinus infection once a year. And then you get it twice a year. Maybe you can't get rid of it. It takes two or three times. Then you get polyps up in your sinuses. And so up it gets your, worse, not it better. It gets worse. It gets, and then you get bronchial infections. Maybe you get recurrent bronchitis, and then you have asthma. These are all caused by underlying allergy. And so you go to a conventional doctor. They're going to give you a dexamethasone shot, antihistamine, give you, a shot of, uh, 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 give you an antibiotic shot, and put you on some antibiotics. Well, same thing if you get bronchial infections. So now you're on antibiotics once a year, twice a year, maybe three times a year. It just doesn't get better. And then those antibiotics kill normal healthy bacteria in the gut. They not only kill the bad, but the good bacteria in the gut down in the colon. And you get yeast overgrowth. Commonly, women, when they take an antibiotic, they used to tell me, please give me some monostat or something because I'm going to get a uh, female yeast infection. Well, you can clear that up.
but you still have yeast. <coughs> excuse me. You still have yeast in your colon, and yeast produces toxins, which further depress the immune system, making you more susceptible to infections. You get more infections, more antibiotics, and you get on this cycle of illness. So, if you go to the conventional doctor, they're going to just treat the symptoms. So you take antihistamines every day, decongestants. You may take some Sudafed or whatever the decongestant is. Maybe they put you on a prednisone dose pack. You know, uh, if you got asthma, they're going to give you inhalers and bronchodilators, and you're going to be treating the symptoms, but you haven't treated the underlying cause. So they label asthma as your diagnosis. Well, asthma really isn't a true diagnosis. It's a symptom of an underlying problem. Recurrent sinus and bronchial infections aren't a diagnosis. They are a symptom of an underlying problem. If you get recurrent and chronic infections, sinus and bronchial infections, what does that tell you about your immune system? It's been compromised. It's compromised. It's unhealthy. And, and we see this commonly in people with hypothyroidism, uh, recurrent and chronic infections. Uh, many people... Absolutely. Especially, so... That's something you need to think is a related problem. But we've got to treat that, and we have a natural way to treat, and allergists have a natural way. There are two schools of allergy. There's the American Academy of Immunology, and then there's the ear, nose, and throat allergies. They have two different methods of testing and treating for allergies. Now, here at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center, we trained in the ear, nose, and throat system of allergy, I was at one time president of the Pan American Allergy Society and have been on the board for numerous years. And the way we, we test, skin testing. We don't do a, a prick test. We do a skin test where we test for the common allergens in the environment. Not to determine whether or not you have allergies. That's a clinical diagnosis. But to determine at what level you're common to the, uh, or susceptible to the common allergens in the environment. So we test for all the common weed pollens, tree pollens, grass pollens, dust mite, mold spore, animal daters, and we test for some foods. And we treat. I used to treat with injections. I grew up and had allergies. I had, a, I had bronchitis so bad that when I coughed, it interrupted the classrooms across, across the uh, mall. When they had, I went to St. Mike's and it had open windows. This is before air conditioning back in the 50s. And I would cough so deep that it would, it would disrupt not only my class, but the class beside us. My family thought, well, he must have tuberculosis. The principal thought that and made him take me to the, uh, down and get evaluated at Methodist. And they, well, he doesn't have tuberculosis. Guess he has allergies. He sent me to McGovern Allergy Clinic, and I took shots for years at home myself. So I was very interested in allergic disorders when I discovered that I could be trained uh, through the Pan American Allergy Society and how to uh, ear, nose, and throat allergy and how to test and treat for allergies. And I literally set up my office here in 1989 out in the west side of Houston in the Katy area, and I tested and treated. I adopted the method. I went up to the president of the society, who's deceased now, passed away, Dr. James Willoughby, and I walked up to him at the first conference because when I went to this conference, this allergy conference back in 1989, the patients problems that these doctors were describing were the exact problems that my patients were having. But they had a treatment for it that treated them naturally, and that was by immunization or desensitization allergy treatment. And this seems really odd, but we literally would take a very dilute amount of the very allergens that the patient that they would use that the patients were allergic to, and they would give them injections and that would build up a new blocking antibody to block the allergy reaction. So I started doing that myself out here in a little bitty office way out in the Katy at the old Katy Hospital. And I started testing my patients for airborne and food allergies, and I had dramatic results. And then doctor friends of mine told me, you know, Hotsi, you need to stop using the shots and use sublingual drops, drops under the tongue. I've got them right here. I'll show you how they work in just a minute. So... What I did is all my kids, because kids didn't like shots, and so what I did with the kids is I would give them sublingual drops. And I did that from 1989, you know, onward. We'd give the kids drops. But in about 1994, 95, a friend of mine 
who had asthma every hunting season during the fall. He had weed pollen allergies and had asthma. Called me up. He'd been on allergy treatment for three years. Called me up and said, Steve or Hotsey, those allergy shots aren't working. I went back and looked. It is it it how he done on how he how often he took his allergy shots. Well, as it turned out, he would only take them during the season and then quit. And I said, Joe, look, I'm going to treat you like my kids. You're not compliant, so I'm going to put you on sublingual drops under the tongue. And this is a dropper bottle. These are the allergy drops. And so I just told him, that, you know, we tested him and put him on a treatment. So we gave him three drops under the tongue on a daily basis. Well, I didn't see him all during the fall. I saw him at a Christmas party and goes, Hotsy, I don't know what you were giving me, but I call those Dr. Hotsy's magic drops. I did not have one asthma attack all season. I came back into the office the next day, and we had about 1,500 of our guests on allergy treatment at the time. And I said, I want everybody switched to drops. And drops worked almost universally for everybody. You take three drops under the tongue every day, so you don't have to worry about coming to the doctor's office, getting a shot, having to sit there and wait an hour, much less the hour, driving to the doctor's office, wait an hour after the shot, and then drive home. And and uh, once we got you built up to a, a, an effective dose, then you could take your shots at home. But we would have problems with people would have reactions to the shots. That's why we had to keep them around for an hour as we were building them up to, a, um, to the treatment level, to the final dose that they needed to be on. But with the drops, we didn't have any reactions. There were no allergy reactions to the drops. And all but a handful of our guests loved the drops. There are about five or six that still take allergy shots. But the overwhelming, 99.9% of all our guests did fine on the sublingual drops. And that's the way we immunize here at the Hotsey Health and Wellness Center. And my recommendation, and allergies will wear down your immune system make you less productive, you won't feel well. They cause, they cause all kinds of problems. They can cause headaches. They can cause cardiac arrhythmias. They can cause gastrointestinal problems. Of course, they can cause asthma, recurrent bronchitis, sinus infections, skin disorders. They can cause you to feel depressed or anxious when you have allergies. And some of the medication can compound those problems that you take over the counter for that. That's why I recommend that if you have allergy problems, particularly if you get recurrent sinus infections or recurrent colds seasonally, you've got allergies and you ought to come out, be evaluated, and then get up. If your evaluation is consistent with allergic disorder, then get up on the allergy drops. And you just take them, as I showed you, you just take them under the tongue like this. There you go. Simple and convenient. And it works, and it's wonderful. So that's a story on allergies. And a lot of you out there, we know that you're suffering from allergies, or maybe you are getting sick at certain times of the year, and you're not sure if they're allergies or not. It's so easy to get tested for this, and the solution is so very simple. Just go ahead and give us a call at 281-698-8698. That's 281-698-8698. It would be a privilege to serve you. Thank you for listening to Dr. Hotsey's Wellness Revolution today. Information provided on this radio program is neither intended nor implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice and is not intended to replace the services of a physician, nor does it constitute a doctor-patient relationship. You should not use information from this radio program to diagnose or treat a health problem or disease without consulting with a qualified health care provider. If you have or suspect you have an urgent medical problem, promptly contact a professional health care provider or call 911. Dr. Hotze's Wellness Revolution radio program advises you to always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified health provider prior to starting any new treatment or with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Any application of the recommendations from this radio program is at the listener's discretion.